everybody in church, amen. It's good to be free from our sins. Can you say amen? Amen. The snare is broken. Think about that little bird that gets caught in the wire, amen, by the fowler. Amen. You and I are free from the old life. We're free from sin because of what Jesus has taught us. Blessed be the Lord, my rock.
we're going to ch change the order of our service. Amen. If we could stand, nothing's too hard.
presence what a great uh, opportunity to worship God and praise his name we're going to uh, pray for our leadership let's pray for Pastor Greg and Lisa Mitchell let's pray for the Moraleses the Galvans the Hearts and the Cassios laboring in Prescott Arizona uh, let's go ahead and pray also for Paul and Linda Campo on the Cape Pastor Ganeer Chip Ganeer and Lori let's pray for the Suspanskis the Kings and the Spicers and let's pray for Gene LaValle in uh, Toronto, amen, the new pastor there, and all the good that God is doing in our Canadian fellowship up there. We can also pray for my pastor, Pastor Keith and Carrie Sullivan. Let's pray for the Rochester Church to be healthy, amen, their new converts uh, getting on fire and becoming faithful and uh, stepping up to the plate and beginning to serve and serve the church and serve other people. Let's pray for their success. Amen. Perhaps uh, there's a need in your life that I did not mention. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand as a sign. Amen. To heaven that you need God. Hallelujah. God sees your hands that are up and God's going to help you. He's going to really move in your behalf. Because he cares for you. Yes. And he has all the authority and all the power to move in your behalf. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray for Shaka and Dante. Let's pray for Janine and the boys. Let's pray for David Bergsland. Uh, lifting up also our police uh, and firefighters yes. and active military veterans Hallelujah. in Greece here in Rochester. We're going to pray for Regine Leonard and the Leonard family. Melvin and Darcia Moyd. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, also for uh, the Gafaldi brothers. Let's pray for uh, the fruit that we're seeing in our lives and our outreach in uh, our families. And that's in April and uh, the movie night, uh, the first Friday of the month. We're going to pray for miracles as people get a vision to win souls to Jesus. Amen. Let's go ahead and praise together. God, 
You're an awesome God. Let's worship uh, Jesus. Call out his name right now. God. Jesus, there's nobody that else that can do God. what uh, you do, Time Lord God. God. You're responsible. Now that Jesus God, we're praying in Jesus' God. name. God. We lift our Jesus voice to heaven, Lord God, that you're glorified you in our in every lives. Area. God, take control God, we of us. Pray right now. God, help God, us. God, bring deliverance, Lord God. God. We need situations that are beyond us. God, you have all the power and all the authority, God. We lift our voices to heaven and we believe you, Lord God, because you said it, God. You've made promises, God. You're a faithful God. When we are unfaithful, you are faithful, God. God, show up this morning, God, in this service, God. Touch those in Greece, God. Move upon all of the believers, God, and bring people to repentance. God, we're asking you, God, save sinners. God, we come to you. We come to you by the name of Jesus. Uh, we give you praise and glory and thank you for your blood, God, and with the authority, God, that you have imbued us with, God, giving us power, Lord God, over the enemy, God. We speak uh, a life uh, into every situation, God. We give you the glory. We're careful to give you the praise, God. We're trusting you to move in our fellowship, God. Move across the earth. God, move in the potter's house, God, throughout uh, every nation, God, every kindred and tongue, every race, God, to hear the gospel. God, and I pray, make us a fruitful people, God, in this place. And on our watch, God, I pray, help us to be careful, God, and to look forward to the fruit, God, that you're going to reward us with. We thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do this morning in this service. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. praise God together. Hallelujah. What a great privilege it is to be here with you this morning. Yes. Amen. Let's take a moment to greet one another, make everybody feel welcome. Praise God. Wonderful you. Losing my voice. Praise God. It's good to be in church with you. Amen. In God's presence. There's so much potential. As people believe God and gather in Jesus' name, we have a few announcements. And that is for those that are online right now, you're listening. 
Uh, we have service at 1030 on Sunday mornings. <clears throat> Sunday evening, we have a second service. I have a second sermon that is ready for tonight. At 530, we pray, and 630 is the service. We're going to worship God and, and uh, call on his name and watch his presence come into our lives and into the service. Amen. So you keep that in mind. Wednesday, we have a midweek service, and that is at 730. It's an hour later than the Sunday evening service. And then we have prayer at 630, and we're going to be calling on heaven, amen, and asking God to help us. Saturday we have outreach, and that is at 11 o'clock. You can meet us here at the building if you'd like to help. If you can't make it, amen, you can certainly pray for us during that time that we meet people as we're handing out flyers, as we're giving our testimony, or if we're street preaching, whatever, that God will be with us in that time to make an impact in Greece. And we're so thankful that um, God is moving and God's going to help us, amen. We have a... Uh, movie night coming the first Friday of the month. Amen. You realize March is right on our doorstep. Yes. Amen. So we're going <laughs> to uh, believe God together. You could bring somebody. We're going to be showing a Christian film and ask God to, to anoint it and uh, bring people to repentance. Amen. Maybe friends of yours or family members need to come to church and uh, experience God. And we have a, 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 an opportunity as a, showing a movie. It's not like a, a regular church service where there's preaching, but they will get the message and God will help them. Amen. Yes. Praise God. If there's no further announcements. We're going to uh, take our offering. And this is about some woes. You ever hear people say, whoa, something bad happens, right? Like that's, that's a car accident or something serious happened. Well, Jesus pronounced woes here, and that is the response or the results of people uh, making certain decisions. And then Luke 6, 24. And he says, But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Amen. And what that means is that a lot of people who have a lot of money, they just are blessed. They don't have any worries or concerns. And they keep hoarding money to themselves. And they're missing out on one of the greatest blessings that is to let God send that money to you, but then through you also. Mm -hmm. In the Beatitudes, Jesus is teaching some radical concepts. And that here is realized when we understand that being rich is, is not all that there is. It's not going to really bring you true happiness. And that being rich is good. But, uh, you know, you're not going to have any problems in your life. You're going to be taken care of. You're going to have your cars, your house, your clothes, everything. There's going to be no problems. But when we release that money that God has given us back to him and back into other people's lives, we're going to be blessed. Yes. The naked awfulness of this truth is explained through the rich man and Lazarus. Many of you might not have ever heard this parable, but Jesus talked about uh, 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 a beggar named Lazarus who sat outside the gate of a rich man. And he, uh, he had leprosy, and the dog came and licked his wounds, and he begged for money. But the rich man would not give him a penny. Wow. And then they both died. Oh. And Lazarus is in the arms of Abraham. He's in his bosom. He's in heaven, in other words. He's just joyously receiving his blessing from being a man of faith. Although he was sick in his life, he had nothing to show for anything. And yet the rich man is in hell, and he's in Hades, and he's burning. And he says, uh, you know, he looks up, he can see Abraham, and he can see Lazarus there, who's enjoying the presence of God, and he says, you know, there's a great gulf that's fixed between the two of them. And you can never go from hell to heaven or from heaven to hell. There's a separation there. So the judgment of people who keep money to themselves, Jesus says here, is for this parable here is hell. And that is not a good place. Getting everything in your life now with your own concerns is just we call it selfishness. And so 
Not every rich man is going to hell. Not every rich person who has got a lot of wealth, billionaires, George Soros, uh, or any of the, the other rich guys, right? That doesn't send them to hell. But the Bible teaches here that uh, woe to the rich. You have received your consolation. You've already been blessed. You've had a great life. You've had everything taken care of. But God wants to show us here that we, when we become liberal in our giving, and we break that covetous spirit, that hoarding spirit, that God comes in and brings blessing, like in the Beatitudes. It's, it's an incredible truth to realize. But, amen, God wants to show you how you can be blessed in the end. And that is to have a liberal heart, a giving heart. God loves a cheerful giver. Let's go ahead and give. Amen, brother. I'm wondering if you can, can you stand and take the offering for us? Let's bow our hearts before the Lord. God, we thank you for our jobs and every uh, bit of money that comes into our lives. God, I pray we would learn about the tithe and the power thereof and learn how to give offerings besides. God, we release them to you, Lord. God, take this money and do great things with it. God, save souls through this church, God, and build up a, a, a witness here in Greece. God, we thank you for these finances, God, and we want to bless your name. We, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I appreciate the help. No problem. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing a song together. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Second Chronicles. And we're going to believe God together this morning for great things. Yes, sir. Amen. In the world of physiology, there's one way to singing appears to be a stress reliever. Yes, sir. A 2017 study measured the amount of cortisol mm. is a stress hormone in participants' saliva before and after they sang. And researchers in that study found that the amount of cortisol was lowered after singing, an indication that people felt more relaxed after they had <coughs> belted out a tune. They also found singing reduces stress levels whether the participants were singing in a group or by themselves or in the shower. I just added that. <laughs> singing is a good thing. It's a great idea to sing. It's great for the individual. Uh, think about how you feel when uh, somebody makes a comment about you or they pay you a compliment or they're talking about you. They're saying, you know, you're, you're a great guy. You're a great person. What a good pers person you are. And it makes you feel pretty good. Think about how God feels when we start talking about him, how good he is, and what he's done for us. We turn to him. Think about how good he feels when we're actually singing his praises. I know he's going to uh, listen to my prayer. I know we're going to get... His attention when we're singing songs, mm -hmm. when we're giving him glory, amen. And that's what I want to preach on from uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Amnon and Moab and Mount Seir. 
who had come against Judah to destroy them. And the enemies were defeated. Yes, sir. That's God's plan. Hallelujah. I've entitled this sermon, Sing and Slay. I thought that was kind of a clever thing. Yes, like sir. a kid's toy. Have you guys heard about the sing and play? Well, this is Sing and Slay. Amen. And if you get an understanding, you could wrap your mind around this. Why we always sing before service. Why we always uh, sing with our hearts uh, lifted before heaven. Amen. This is why. Because we're about to slay some demons this morning. Yes, sir. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. amen. Let's look at winning battles for your life. Firstly, winning battles. Every single individual here is going to be fighting a battle. They're going to face... Battles in your life, whether it's a battle of inward attitudes, maybe you have uh, personal habits that are harmful, that are not helping you, no, and uh, whether it's a battle from the outside, maybe, with other people or other people <coughs> groups, maybe you're battling the devil himself, Satan is uh, coming against you, you need to win your battles. If you want to win your battles, I'm going to give you the recipe this morning. Hopefully, we're not fighting against God. If we are, then here's an opportunity to re reset our loyalties to Him. When we adjust our mind and come to understand that singing His praises, amen, exalting Him on high is... The right thing to do. We gain a more obedient and uh, successful, productive experience with God. Yes. Because ultimately, He is going to win. Yes. Yes. Your arms are too short if you're boxing God. Oh, yeah, God, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> it's impossible, man. You're not going to do any damage to God. Right. He is going to win. He is omnipotent, all powerful, and He's got your back. He yes. wants to help you. To win your battles. Yes, yes. Yes. There are a few highlights I want to look at through this scripture this morning. And it records how Hezekiah, the king, acted in a, in a horrible dilemma. How he solved it as the enemies were coming up against Judah. We need to learn how to overcome. We sang that song. And I didn't even think about that when I pulled the song service. But we sang that song, overcome, we overcome the devil, yes. amen, through the blood of Jesus, through the word of our testimony, yes. and through worship. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. If you'll stay with me this morning, I want to help you. Ultimately, amen, praying and learning how to worship God, how to lift our hands, yes. how to praise Him, will give us a supernatural power or an unction so that we can fight and fight the demonic or the supernatural, the spiritual realm. It's not going to be fought through intellect. It's not going to be fought through your talent. Some of you have a, an ability in your minds to uh, look through every scenario. Well, if I do that, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and if I don't do that, if I say the wrong thing, and you try to figure everything out. And it's a lot of work. I don't know how you do that, but... God's saying here, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God's really going to help us this morning. Amen. Give us supernatural power. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. It's not a worldly power. It's going to be something that comes through heaven. And uh, secondly, we also need to have a strategy. Uh, the logistics on how we're going to win this battle. It's not going to be by accident that you are victorious. Yeah. It's, you need a strategy. Yes. You need to figure out what God is doing and ask Him, God, what is the plan here, man? Can you help me? And God shows Hezekiah exactly what to do to battle the enemy. Yes. Secondly, we need to address fear. Yes. If you don't address fear, then you are going to cower, you're going to call them giants and you look like grasshoppers and you're, you got to you got to deal with your fears yes, it happened after this verse 20 that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon 
and others with them besides the Ammonites, they came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming up against us yes. from beyond the region. Yes. And uh, it's uh, the Syrians, and they are in Hezeron, Tamar, which is called En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. This is a real problem. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judea. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord in all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. So there's this concept of fight or flight. When you're up against something that's bigger than you, you're going to do one or two things. You're going to either run away from it or you're going to stand up and fight against it. It's a physiological, uh, a physiological reaction to an event that is perceived as stressful or frightening. Mm. Amen. The perception of threat activates the sympathetic nerve system and triggers an acute stress response that prepares the body to fight or to flee. It's those yeah. hormones that are released in you and you're like, you're on edge, you're ready to do something. It's that fear mechanism. Yes, it is. A great multitude has come against them. There's insurmountable odds. There are problems in your life. Your problems got problems, right? Yes. They're big. They're massive. You, you look at them and, and you don't think that there's any way that you're going to be helped. It means that they should prevail against Israel. They would become slaves to the Moabites. That means no longer would Israel be a nation. They wouldn't be able to worship God. They would, the enemy would come in and plunder and steal all the gold and silver and uh, rob the temple and uh, maybe take some people off into captivity, uh, make them as slaves. No longer would they have their own independence. It would be humiliating. And it's painful like getting a, a drug addiction or you know being bound to alcohol. Yeah. Or some kind of a perversion, a relationship thing, gambling. These things are humiliating because they're going to rob you of your innocence, yes. your dignity, and your bank account. Yes, sir. It's painful. Indeed. This is what happens to all of us. We find ourselves in a predicament. Maybe it's financial. Or we've destroyed our families through uh, an addiction, drugs, or maybe an immoral relationship. This is something that is so large and terrifying. We can't handle it. It's beyond us. Yes. We can do one of two things. We can either fight by our own strength, or we can choose to let God fight for us. Amen. This is the solution, man, because you are not equipped for it. There are things that are working against your life, whether it's a curse that you brought on by your own willful decisions or something that came from your family through the lineage of your DNA, the chromosomes, whatever. Uh, but, you know, there's curses against you. There's demonic things that are positioned to destroy your life, to destroy your faith. Or if they can't do that, they'll try to get you to just maybe back off a little bit on your commitment. All kinds of things that you can't fight. You don't have the wherewithal on your own. <coughs> on your own strength. So we need to do four things. Purposefully, turn to God in prayer. Yes. Amen. Secondly, need desperately to learn how to worship God. This is one of the main points in this scripture that we learn. And thirdly, need to faithfully believe in God to fight for us who can easily wipe out our enemies. Did you hear me? He can wipe out your depression, your anxieties, your fears, and your habits. He wants to break the insanity of backsliding. Why would you ever let anything get in between you and your God? That, that, that blows my mind. Why would you let that happen? And fourthly, um, Exodus 14, we get back to the story of Moses Amen. As they're uh, being pursued out of uh, Egypt and uh, the army is chasing them and they're backed up to the Red Sea. Yeah. They have no other way of going, no options. Right. 
Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord who will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You don't, you don't need to do anything. You need only to be still. That's glorious. Amen. I want to secondly look at seeking the Lord. Amen. That means turn our attention to Him. Uh, 1 Timothy 2 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. Luke 18 1. Jesus spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Man, this is the strategy. Amen. And turn to God and give it to Him and don't give up believing Amen. until He wins the battle for you. Yes. The King's Prayer sort of goes like this in verse 5. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah. He's praying in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O God of our fathers, you are... Uh, not God in heaven who do not rule over the kingdoms of the earth in your hand. Is there not power and might so that no one is able to stand against you? And are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before? Your people Israel gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever. He's reminding God about the covenant that was established all the way back to Abraham. He's not being disrespectful. He's just, you know, he's calling him out. Hey, God, you said you were going to do this for us. You were going to be there for us. And you did it for them. You can do it for us. Amen. If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, verse 9, we will stand before this temple and in your presence and cry out to you in our affliction. And you will hear us. Yes. And you will save. And now here are the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir whom uh, you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. It's a little history there. But they turned from them, would not destroy them. And here they are rewarding us by coming out to, to throw us out of your possession. Mm -hmm. This is your idea, God. You said, I'm going to give you a land that's flown with milk and honey. And here they are, they're coming up against them to rip them off. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. And I imagine he smiled at that. Yeah. The king's prayer, we want to learn a few things here. The king's prayer is audible. He's speaking out loud to God about good things and what God did in the past and what he uh, can do right now. Speaking out loud, uh, God, you need to help us. Yeah. Vocalizing it, releasing that energy. And I want you to know that when we have this thing, we call it congregational prayer. It's a part of our service uh, where we, we talk, I give all the uh, different prayer requests and um, uh, we read them, and then we have an opportunity to pray. And usually somebody is asked in the congregation to seal the prayer. But before that, that's an opportunity for you and I to speak out to God, just like you're screaming at your dog. Hey, get out of that stuff. <laughs> or you're screaming at the kids. I told you to make your bed. You're lifting your voice. You're not whispering. Yeah. Please do your chores, honey. <laughs> right? <laughs> you you get into it. it. There's a power behind your voice. Yes. And when we pray, we call it congregational praying. We all pray together at the same time. Amen. God's going to sort it out, and there's power in that. And then at the end, somebody you know seals it uh, by the, the one man usually that seals the prayer. We do it all together at the same time. This is where the devil submits to us. You can't get the devil out of your life, out of your church, out of your marriage, until you speak to him and speak to him with authority and power. Amen. And God responds in helping us when we cry out in desperation. 
When we use our voices, we lift our voices to heaven and praise God. Yes. Reminding God of his promises. He promised to protect. You are my people. We remind him of that. Amen. Hezekiah in his prayer, he's calling out. He's reassuring himself for one thing. When you pray and you call out to God, there's something that happens in you. That energy, that power goes through your life. Your faith is activated through your words. Yeah. And uh, you're reminding yourself about God's providence. And that means he's going to take care of you. And his power that uh, in times past, and then it's not out of disrespect, but we're just like reminding God, hey, God, remember when you did this. Remember when you gave me this miracle or that miracle. And uh, I know you can do it again. And I need you right now. That was then. This is now, God. We believe you to help us. The king is praying in faith. He's praying out God's character. God, you're a just God. You're a merciful God. Yeah. Look upon our situation here and uh, uh, execute judgment against our enemies. Help us out here. Yeah. You did it in the past so many times before. Do it again. Amen. This will be no different for you. Yeah. Thirdly, it is very important that we realize our weaknesses. That we are frail, what, the way God has made our frame, our nature, you know, we're very weak, we're very emotional. And this is what gets us into trouble, makes us to be afraid whenever there's a conflict or a problem in our life. Amen. In humility, we need to just learn how to admit that we don't, we don't know what's going on, we don't know what to do. We don't have any help. There's no one to help us. But you, God. Yes, sir. We can't overpower them. There are more of them than there are of us. They are superior. They have more power than us. We need a strategy. Secondly, we need a plan. God, we need you to tell us what to do. Because, quite frankly, we're just lost. Mm -hmm. We don't have the answers. Yes, so let's look. Next, it conquering fear because if you can conquer. of the sons of Aphath in the midst of the assembly. They were in church. Amen. Do not neglect the gathering of the assembly. Hebrews 10, 25. Especially you see the day approaching. Yes. They were in church in the assembly. And this man starts to prophesy. And he said, listen, all of you in Judah and in the inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, Listen, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeru. You will not need to fight this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go up out against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Let's praise God together for that. Amen. I'll take that any day. God, you're going to be with me. God, you're going to help me. You're going to conquer all the demons that are against my life. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Correct, correct. Amen. Let's just, mm -hmm. you know, weigh the two out. Mm -hmm. We have the God who spoke the worlds into existence. Billions upon billions of galaxies. Galaxies filled with billions of stars. Sure. And Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
You have a relationship with God through Jesus. Yes. He's living in your heart. You ask that Jesus come live in my heart. And he said, I'm coming. I want to be there. I'm going to stay and I'm going to, I'm going to be with you to the bitter end. Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you and I will be with you. Uh, this is Moses' prayer over Joshua. Joshua was taking over the church about what was coming in the future in the promised land. The Lord himself goes before you and you will... Uh, will be together. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. When God is with you, amen, it's going to be tremendous. And his response, uh, Jehoshaphat hears this prophecy and he believes it. Many times you'll hear somebody prophesy in this church. There's tongues and interpretation and a word goes out and some of you are like uh, not believing it. If you believe it and receive it for yourself, amen, that's where the power comes from. It's from God into your life. And he bowed his head and with his face to the ground and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and and high. Right. Amen. There was something incredible about that. That word worship is derived from the old English uh, word called word stripe, meaning worship, honor shown to an object, which has been uh, etymologized as worthiness. When we worship God, we're recognizing what his value is, his worth to us. It's called worship. Or worship. Amen. What is worthy or what is worship or what is to be honored? Amen. And for the new people here, maybe you're a new convert, you see my wife or me, we're lifting our hands before heaven, we're speaking in tongues, we're worshiping God at certain times, we're just thankful that God is here. And you can do that. Amen. Amen. You can follow our example. Or other people here that may be filled with the Spirit. Or they're just grateful to worship God. The Levites were worshiping. It was loud and it was high. It was a high volume. There was a volume level on my amp over here. And I can crank it up. That's what he's talking about. They cranked it up, man. They weren't afraid or shy. It wasn't a religious... Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord together. <laughs> it wasn't like that. It wasn't a half-hearted whisper or a timid or a shy response. Amen. It was like at the Super Bowl when you were uh, screaming for your team to win. Do you remember that? And they, they lost anyways too bad. <laughs> right? You see, you know, people know how to get excited about something, but when it comes to church. Right? They're all shut down. They got nothing to be happy about. There's an energy that's released, amen, a great exuberance or a passion when we realize that God is on our side. He's going to help you. And we should recognize that and be thankful, grateful, that he's going to do it. Yes, sir. What is true worship? Worship is when we give our deepest affections and praise or prizing God. Amen. True worship of God is when we love him we, with our, all our heart, all our soul and mind and strength. And when we prize God above everything else and put him first in our hearts, that's worship. You can worship God uh, with giving. We pass the basket. Amen. You can pay your tithes and offerings. Yes. Uh, you can uh, worship God in your time. You guys have decided to come to church and spend an hour with us, and we're grateful for that. And that's going to bless you. It's going to come back to bless you and help you. You're spending time reading your Bible uh, or praying or fasting. All those things are going to be blessed, that's a way of worshiping God. You're saying, God, this is more important than anything else. Amen. Yes. Not the sitcoms, not 
uh, scrolling through your TikToks or uh, doing research. I'm doing something very important. What time is it? Oh, it's four in the morning. Okay, I got more work to do. One more hour. Right? How about if you spend half that time reading your Bible or a quarter of the time praying? Right. Look what would happen in your life. Think about what God could do with your life. Amen. I want to close uh, and look at uh, Sing and Slay. There's a spiritual volume here. We've got a drum set. One day we're going to have a drummer get on those drums and make some noise. Amen. And uh, the Bible talks about the symbols. It's in the Bible. Psalm 47.1. This is about shouting. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Loud shout, Psalm 33, 3. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings, right? Uh, with loud shouts, loud crashing cymbals is a part of worshiping God. I'm not going to do that anymore. You can relax. But, amen, Psalm 150, verse 5. Praise him with Sounding symbols. Praise him with loud clashing symbols. This is from the Bible. It's okay to get loud. Yes. Amen. And your your enemies are going to be defeated. Amen. Amen. What God is saying here to you and I is that uh, we can defeat our enemies. Amen. By relying upon him. Yes. The strategy quite simply is the same. Now, I'm not going to lose you here at this point. Just bear with me. The strategy for this situation is to sing. In this war, the battle was going to be won by singing. So they rose early in the morning, verse 20, and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and to those who should praise in the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army, who were saying, praise the Lord. You can imagine this. Yes. Right? They have, there's a million man army against them. And they've got their swords and their chariots, I imagine, and their spears and all the, the blazing armor, uh, you know, the helmets. And, uh, and Jehoshaphat has uh, a choir show up, right? And they're, uh, they're, I don't, they're probably not dressed in wet robes, but they start singing. And something powerful <laughs> happens at this point. Real faith produces power. Amen. If we believe Jesus said only believe to Jairus, uh, who was, you know, he ran the synagogue, his daughter's dead, and somebody said, Why are you bothering the master anymore? Your daughter is dead. And Jesus looked at me and said, Don't be afraid, only believe. And then they went to the house. Jesus raised the little girl from the dead. Faith releases power in our lives. And he says here in the scripture, believe on the Lord God. Believe in his prophets. Amen. That is what we find in the Old Testament. Amen. That is the beginning of the Bible. You should be reading about what happened a long time ago to understand your power and ability to defeat the enemy through the Old Testament and through the prophets. It says believe in his word. Amen. Spend time every day. Uh, if you read three chapters a day, you will go through the whole Bible in one year. I've tried recently to read 10 chapters a day. Amen. And that's really going to help you. It's going to produce power in your life. Just believe on the word. Trust God. Amen. <clears throat> the beauty of holiness, that talks about the songs of the saints. I'm not talking about Taylor Swift or Mariah Carey. That dates me a little bit, right? <laughs> but these are holy people. When God hears the saints singing, it's pure, it's beautiful, it's glorifying Him yes. in the beauty of holiness. You've given your life to Jesus, you're a saint. 
You're saved. Amen. And when they began to sing, verse 22, and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who had come up against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. Mm -hmm. And when they made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Somehow God brought the confusion there mm -hmm. and they started fighting against one another. There were ambushes that were set and uh, they destroyed one another. Your victory is for good. Amen. And it's for good press for the Lord. Be because you're constantly failing, you're constantly in debt, you're constantly going back to the bottle, you're constantly failing in relationships. That doesn't glorify God. Right. You know, if you're backside, you come back, we're thankful for that, and we're glad to see you trying, right? But, but when you have a victory, that's when God gets the attention and the glory, and everybody is going to be listening to your story, going to be hearing about what God did for you, how God gave you a victory. He's going to get good press through this. When you and I are victorious in our lives, in our personal lives, it glorifies God. It brings the attention to the Lord. So that they too could also experience the dominion that he offers. That he wants to help them too. That's what good your victory is going to accomplish. Verse 27. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem. And with Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. Aren't you sick of being depressed? Aren't you tired of of not having the victory in your life. Right. You're letting the devil run you rampant and ragged and you're weary and well-doing and you're getting beat up, slapped down all the time. You're like a little puppet, like a rag doll. Aren't you sick of the, that? And God says here, I'm bringing them joy. They got a victory. And that's glorious. God wants to give joy into the Christian's life. For the Lord made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets for the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms in those countries. When they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel, then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. You see, several things are threatened to here. That is the joy that God gives you, and rejoicing over your enemies, and you're going to have a testimony. You're going to be able to start telling people, you know what, I used to live this way. You know what, I used to do this or I used to do that. And God did a miracle in my life. And no longer do I have to be bound to that substance or that relationship or that drug. And I, I don't hate people anymore. I'm free from that. And your testimony is going to speak volumes for God. Look, they had guitars and drums back then too. They made a lot of noise in church. Right? Some people come to your house and they're not ready for your family, right? And people are laughing out loud and they're screaming and they're making noise and they're, you know, they, they're like, why are these people so happy? You know, they're not ready for it because it's noisy. And lastly, rest is enjoyed after the battle is won. For you and I, uh, amen, if we passionately begin to worship God and, you know, get into it and give Him the glory, praise His name, call on His name to bring power into our lives. Amen. We will experience victories. Amen. God's desire for you is dominion and all these things that we just talked about, that joy that you've been missing, amen, so that you can have victory, you can have a rejoicing and your testimony is going to win other people to Christ. Amen. 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 Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Sing and slay. Praise God. Maybe you're not saved. You came this morning. You're not born again. You've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. You want to make a commitment to God. You want to give your life to Christ. Uh, the Bible says that sin is fun for a season, but uh, uh, eventually it comes and kind of bites you. Uh, in the back, it, 
uh, the wages of sin is death. That's a payment or the reward of sin. The consequences of sin is just depression and pain. And the Bible says that you can be free from your sin. You can have a brand new life. It's called being born again. If you quite simply would believe in your heart and confess with your lips, amen, God can save you this morning. God can give you a new life. God really loves you, died for your sins, wants a relationship with you, doesn't want to see you uh, attacked by your enemies and be brought into slavery. Many people become a servant of sin and then eventually they find themselves as slaves of sin. And God would not have it to be that way. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you're not saved, you want to pray. And you want to turn your life around. You want to get away from the old life. You want to break that power. It comes through salvation. Through what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Salvation for all. Amen. Amen. That's you. With an uplifted hand, you want to pray and get saved. You're not saved. You're not right with God. Amen. Praise God. Or maybe you're a backslider. Second, the second call is for those who have wandered away or those who have been drawn away from that relationship with God. Your faith has dwindled to nothing. You're, you've gone back to your sin. Amen. And that's for you also. Amen. You'd like to pray and get right with God with an uplifted hand. We count it a privilege uh, and an honor here to pray at this point in the service. You want to get right with heaven, amen. Jesus is calling you back as the prodigal son uh, squandered his inheritance. He took uh, all that money and he wasted it on harlots and riotous living. And it says he came to himself at a certain point. That means he, he started thinking about his life. And he said to himself, how much more food do my father's servants have than and I'm going, I'm starving here. I know what I'll do. I'll go to my father. I'll return to him. And I'll say, you know, I've sinned against you, Father, and I've sinned against God. I am sorry. Yes. Take me back. And so he said, that's the plan. I'm going home. And he goes to his father. His father sees him a long ways off. And he runs to greet him. And then that's what God is doing for you tonight. If you're back to living. You're not right with God. Amen. You want to get uh, heaven. You want to get back on track. Track. Amen. That's you. Amen. With an uplifted hand. Not saved or backslidden. Praise God. And I'd like to thirdly open up the altars now for a time of prayer. If you'd like to come forward and pray. Maybe you are saved. Maybe uh, you're not backslidden. And God spoke to you at some point in this sermon about what you need to do, what you're missing. And when he really wants to help you. We're going to sing this song, Overcome. Amen. Isn't that 
Thus says the Lord your God tonight, I am a God of war, yes. and I have won, I have overcome death, hell, and the grave. No grave could hold me, for I am all powerful. I will not be subdued in my kingdom, and my servants shall not be destroyed. This is my promise to you. I have given you armor, I've given you weapons and uh, strategies, and I have given you my spirit. That yes. says the Lord your God that today. You shall overcome, you shall be victorious, and you will fight as you worship me, as you mm. give me priority, as you give me your entire life. Yes. Do not hold back. Do not uh, submit to the enemy. Do not fear. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not stop fighting. For I will give you the victory that you so desire. Yes. I've seen the issues. And I know the strategies of hell to destroy your faith. Mm. To sift you as weak as Peter was. But I have covered you with my blood and I am here today. To give you a report, you shall overcome. Thus says the Lord your God today. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for touching us. Amen. Praise God. It's great to. Have you here with us, amen, in God's presence, amen. Yes, Go forth and have a great week, amen. God bless you. We'll be back at 5.30 for prayer. 6.30 is our evening service, amen. Let me ask uh, Brother Marvin if you could pray for us as we go. Give us another word. So cool, Thank you, Jesus. God, what in heaven, yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, we pray unto you. We know you are the Holy Trinity of all. Please, please, we pray that you continue to pray. That we pray to you and you bless us with every breath, with every blood going through our hearts. Bless our families, bless our congregation in this beautiful, maybe small, but we are mighty, God. Yes. God, please make sure we get home safe to our friends and come back at 5.30 or 6.30 to bless you some more. For you to bless us in this, we pray in your name, amen. 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 Yes. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Yes, sir.